G'day YouTube, 1MJ here and welcome back. Well, it's just a sea of green all over the place and the market just continues to really fire. Now, I did take some profits from some altcoins yesterday and at the moment it's hurting a little bit because the altcoins just continue to pump. But what can you do? That's just the way it is. All I do is remind myself that no one ever lost money taking profits. Yeah, I might have lost some unrealized gains, but who knows, there could be a sharp correction at some stage in the market, and maybe I can then redirect some funds into some other things. We'll have to wait and see. But yes, at the moment, it's definitely hurting a little bit watching those coins continue to pump. But have a look at this market cap. This was literally $1.471 trillion only like maybe 20, 30 minutes ago. So it is jumping up fast. It is really moving substantially at the moment bitcoin dominance just hanging around that 60 percent eth dominance has dropped so the other altcoins are really starting to pump and i mean just look at the prices they're unbelievable like bitcoin forty-eight thousand. it is now going towards that sort of fifty thousand dollar mark and i think if bitcoin can break fifty thousand it may go on a bit of a run and it may drain some of the money out of all of these old coins we'll just have to wait and see that may not be the case maybe everything just pumps in unison we'll just have to wait and see all right what's really blazed away though amp all right have a look at that on quite a run the graph so i sold this is what i sold some of my graph not much a very small amount and it's continued to pump up we can see there's a little retracement here so maybe it pays off to have done that engine coin quite a move nano basic attention token very nice uh phantom zcash adara hashgraph uh, v chain so lots of coins are, are pumping what's going to be interesting is are there any real losses at the moment because everything's pumping extremely hard and that does concern me though all right pancake swap yeah of course was going to have a retracement it pumped so hard Elrond likewise I may look to get into some Elrond so I am looking for it to have a substantial not substantial but at least a pullback anyway and I may put some of that cash that I just made into that we'll have to wait and see Avalanche Terra and again Avalanche I wouldn't be surprised if it goes down a whole lot lower but then again look this could be just a blip on the radar where things continue to go a whole lot higher uh, likewise with Dogecoin we can see it's leveled off somewhat sort of retracing but again maybe it everything just continues to go excuse me just a whole lot higher we'll have to really wait and see all right let's go over to the bitcoin chart and we can see here it is breaking up so we are in price discovery again the old price discovery was forty two thousand. we've broke through that and now we are headed towards the fifty thousand dollar mark i'm not sure if fifty thousand is going to be a hard place for it to get through whether it's going to find some resistance there or if I think it finds the resistance more around the $60,000 mark I just get the feeling like the $20,000 brackets or increments will be the ones that will be hard to beat 20,000 was the old all-time high so we got through that then we got around to this kind of $40,000 mark found some resistance because if we go back and we have a look at sort of the $20,000 range so we did see sort of a little bit of resistance well more back around here we found some resistance about kind of breaking through that and we could get to the forty thousand dollar mark we've found some resistance getting through that so i get the feeling like it might be up around here that we're actually going to find more resistance i'm not saying we won't get any but i just think the sixty thousand dollar mark will be where some resistance might be found again we'll have to wait and see and how long that takes to play out we are already getting close to the weekend so are we going to have a weekend retracement that is entirely possible sometime over you know friday saturday sunday maybe even very early sort of monday morning we have a retracement it's very hard to know though things are quite sort of euphoric at the moment and that is what scares me not that i think this is all over just that we might see a hefty correction and again maybe we come back down and we tip this over the weekend we'll just have to wait and see it's entirely possible but not guaranteed 
Now, tons and tons of good news, but also some sort of contradictory sort of news, but let's move on. All right, so DeFi growth and potential grayscale YFI security uh, push your own finance to 45K. So this has been quite volatile. And the one thing that worries me a little bit about Yearn Finance is they actually had a vote and they've increased the number of coins that they have. And look, the coins aren't coming out for a while. And I think from what I read, the coins were to fix up some scams and things that had happened where people had lost coins. Again, I'm not 100% sure of that. I only had a very brief sort of look at it. But just the fact that they can vote to increase more coins uh, is a little bit concerning. But look, that's not to say that I don't think uh, YFI will do well or is still a, a bad project to get into. But I do worry a little bit, you know, that was the thing that people really got into it. I think it was 21,000 coins they had or something. And now they've increased it by 6,000 coins or something like that. But I think it's going to take a couple of years for those 6,000 coins to be put out on the market. But look, Grayscale wanting to get into anything is likely going to push the prices quite high. I mean, it's already quite high at the moment. It's basically worth more than Bitcoin. But again, it's because there's only 21,000, there's not 21 million. So possibly good news uh, for anyone who is in Wi-Fi. All right, now this is a little bit of a worry. So Christine Lagarde, and I think this is more FUD than anything. So Christine Lagarde says, it is very unlikely that central banks will ever hold Bitcoin or other cryptocurrency, said the president of the European Central Bank. The possibilities of central banks holding Bitcoin in the future are out of the question, asserted the president of ECB, Christine Lagarde. At the same time, US Secretary Janet Yellen warned about the growing risks of digital assets used in illegal activities, but believes they could have a vital role ultimately. They absolutely will. And I don't know why they focus so much on the crime that's happening with digital assets. It's easier to track the digital assets. And there's going to be new technology that comes out that makes it easier to track and all the rest of it and identify who is behind the wallets and things like that because they've got to find ways to cash out and eventually spend that money and I think that's spend you know the coins money whatever you want to call it I think that's where they'll start to catch people I think this is all just sort of fud and again you know people who just don't really quite understand it all just yet Central banks, I think it's only a matter of time and they absolutely will custody Bitcoin and Ethereum and other cryptocurrencies. They will have no choice. They will simply disappear if they don't. So this is a silly statement and also you know, saying that they need to be really worried about the illegal activities. There's illegal activities in everything. In any market where there is profits to be made, there's illegal activity. Cryptocurrencies is no different, but cryptocurrencies, it is a lot easier to track where the money's going. What is hard is just to find out who the money's actually going to. But I believe technology will come in the future that will sort that out. And I think this will be a much safer way of doing business into the future. And there is reports out there from certain government agencies that say they would prefer people do crime with cryptocurrencies because it is easier to track. So again, there's you know conflicting information out there. And look, we can go over to, uh, where's the one? Yeah, here. So Crypto Mum, she's come out and she is with the whole finance and government departments and all the rest of it. So she's the commissioner of the SEC. She's saying she thinks it's time for a Bitcoin ETP. So the regulatory, the regulator, the regulator, I can't even say that, regulator, playfully known as Crypto Mum, said people are already eager to trade a Bitcoin ETP. And if so, and so if we don't give them the natural way, which I think would be an ETP, they're going to look for other less optimal ways to do it. I completely agree. And it just gives people a way of getting into cryptocurrencies without holding the actual asset themselves. A lot of people just still believe in traditional finance and they don't know how to store it and don't understand security and all the rest of it. And again, it's particularly the older generation that have the bulk of the wealth around the world. And for some of them, you know, if you're 60 plus years old, maybe 70 years old, cryptocurrencies probably just seems too out there. You know, you didn't grow up with computers. You may not be all that good with computers. That's not to say no one who's 70 years old understands computers. There absolutely is 70 year olds. But I would say 
at least a decent percentage of them. They just wouldn't really understand computers all that well and certainly all these cryptocurrencies and seed phrases and how to send it and not lose everything. It'd be all too much for them. So the old sort of traditional way for investing would be the better way. E e EFTs, ETPs, all sorts of things like that. Investing in companies that actually, you know, like the Coinbase uh, IPO that's coming out. That would probably be a better way for them to get exposure to it. Now, Orca also, this is very interesting. So the Bitcoin options market is assigning a low probability of price rising above $100,000 this year, despite widespread expectations for a meteor meteoric rally in the wake of Tesla's recent purchase of the top cryptocurrency. At press time, the options, mar options market is pricing 12% odds of the cryptocurrency trading in seven figures before the end of December, according to data source skewed. The probability of a break above 70,000 is around 21%. So only 21% of people betting on this think it's going to go above 70,000. Now, don't worry too much about this because it was the same back in 2017. When it was going up, everyone was saying it'll never break you know, $5,000 and then it'll never break $10,000. It'll never break $15,000. This is the old guard betting against it. It's not the new guard because the new guard, I'm going to say, would be the people who are betting for it to go above we're nearly at 50,000 it's February are we going to have some big retracements before that happens absolutely but I think it's it's not impossible that Bitcoin doesn't go above 100,000 this year it's completely possible it happens I just think it's unlikely at the moment The everything is just building the the adoption is really starting to happen. Bigger companies are coming out and buying it. Now we've got something over here, PayPal. So again, PayPal is currently only selling cryptocurrencies and they've made mega dollars. They're only selling it to the US at the moment. No one in the global uh, PayPal system outside of America can buy crypto yet. And now we see what's happening. PayPal's crypto payments are coming to the UK this year. And it's not going to be long before it goes worldwide. I'm going to say it will be worldwide through PayPal before the end of this year. And that is going to push prices even higher again. And we already spoke about it yesterday. MasterCard is about to bring cryptocurrencies to almost 1 billion people worldwide. Visa is bringing cryptocurrencies to people. I really do think it's somewhat crazy to think that Bitcoin won't go over 100,000. Again, I'm not saying it's impossible. It's definitely a possibility. I just think it's unlikely. We're already halfway there and it's February. We've got so much more to go. There's so many more things that are currently happening. Don't get me wrong. I think there's a good chance Bitcoin gets to just under 60,000, let's say 58,000, and we maybe have a 50% retracement. That is possible. I don't think it's likely, but I think we get to 60,000, and there's a very good chance that we drop back down to 40 something thousand. That would not surprise me at all. And we're going to see a number of those things happen throughout the build up to getting to 100,000 and beyond 100,000. I think, particularly, the 100,000 will be quite a psychological barrier to break. I, th I think there will be a big pullback somewhere in the kind of ninety thousand dollar mark and i mean a big one it'll probably be you know forty percent retracement so we go from ninety thousand you know back down again to around sort of you know fifty forty thousand that would not surprise me at all I'm not saying it's guaranteed nobody really knows we'll just have to wait and see but again we go to christine lagarde over here and she's saying she doesn't think central banks will ever hold bitcoin I think it's almost guaranteed they will they'll just have to they will have no choice and here's another reason why I think that two trillion dollar banking giant BNY Mellon reveals Bitcoin and crypto plans so New York based banking giant BNY Mellon is jumping into the Bitcoin and cryptocurrency game the bank which boasts around two trillion in assets under management has announced plans to hold Bitcoin and other cryptocurrencies on behalf of its clients. The move comes amid what the BNY executive heading up its digital assets unit, Mike, uh, I don't know how to say that, 
Demisi, maybe, called an uptick in institutional interest in the emerging Bitcoin and crypto class. So, why wouldn't the central banks get involved if all the other banks are, are, are doing it? Of course they're going to. They just won't be able to simply hold back. I mean, there's a small possibility that they don't, and I guess it's because they provide money to all these other banks and things like that, the central banks. That's where all these other smaller banks go through because I don't think BNY is a central bank, but I really do think it's only a matter of time and central banks will be custodying Bitcoin and things like that. They won't have a choice. They will need it to offer services to other banks and things like that. They will just get left behind if they don't. I think what... Christine Lagarde is doing here is it's just the usual kind of FUD that everyone, not everyone, but a lot of people are doing. Uh, they're, they're trying to FUD it to keep the price down so they can build big positions in it. And then you wait in a couple of months time, six months time, all of a sudden it'll be uh, the central banks have decided that they couldn't be left behind and we'll find out that it was back when they were saying this, that they were actually buying it. In any other market, this would be called manipulation but when you know central banks do it and things like that it's just stock standard practice so it really is funny to think that she would say these things but again i understand why she's likely saying it i can't guarantee that that's what's going on no one really knows but we've seen a lot of stuff like this people come out and say you know we're not getting into it and then all of a sudden you find out they did and at the time they say we weren't getting into it is when they were actually buying it to keep the prices down there's been so many stories that have come out like that all right last but not least i just want to go back to here refresh this so this was 1.4 there we go. This was $1.84 trillion and, I don't know, 15 minutes ago. This is just growing and growing and growing. <sighs> just be somewhat careful. You know, things are pretty euphoric at the moment. We could have a hefty retracement on the way. I'm not saying it's going to come. And again, I did take some profits yesterday from some of my altcoins. I feel a little bit hurt at the moment because they've just continued to grow. And it's that whole thing of oh well i've lost some unrealized gains but that's what they are they're unrealized until you hit the sell button you haven't made anything until you sell it and take that profit so i'm not too not too upset and it was a very small amount again i think it would have been maybe one percent profit of or possibly two percent profit of my altcoins so nothing major but i did take some profits all right let me know down below, are you currently taking profits at the moment or are you just still just piling into things and do you just do you see it going a whole lot higher? I think we're probably going to have a correction sometime soon because of the way things have been traveling, hence why I took some profits. But look, I could be wrong, I've been wrong before and I never offer financial advice anyway. It's always just my personal opinion. I am not a financial advisor. Again, comment down below. Are you taking some profits right now or are you still just piling money in? All right, stay safe. Be kind to one another. Everyone should be on that game train at the moment. They're literally everywhere. And I'll see you next time.